एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक वेलकम टू द स्विगी क्लोन फुल स्टैक क्लोन एप्लीकेशन वी आर बिल्डिंग एंड आई एम गोइंग टू पब्लिश नेक्स्ट कपल ऑफ मे बी सिक्स सेवन वीडियोस एंड वील ट्राई टू कवर एज मच एज पॉसिबल सो व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू बिल्ड इन दिस वीडियो सो वी कैन सी आवर रेस्टोरेंट ए आर रनिंग वी विल बिल्ड कपल ऑफ मोर रेस्टोरेंट ए लाइक सम ए एडिशन हियर वी हैव दिस सर्च वी नीड टू जस्ट रिफैक्टर सम ऑफ दी थिंग्स एंड देन let's say you want to update the dish menu items after uploading it and you want to delete those things we can add and for landing page this is the landing page right what we can show here is the first the highly rated the dish menu items and top restaurant in nearby so currently there will be two grid items we are going to show the top listing restaurants and top listing dish menu items so here uh, we can just use these apis first is maybe a simple default search with just page and limit that will give us the top restaurants and then uh, for we can also fetch the number of dishes directly without even uh, looking into the restaurants because dish you can fetch directly as a list and you can also pass the filter criteria that's just for landing page means like uh, what are the popular dish in particular area and all those things and then i did some changes first let's walk through those changes now i enabled uh, login with uh, uh, login with google and we are using firebase so adding something like login with google is not uh, rocket science it's very easy and how we did it it's a really simplified process because firebase provide a google provider and there are some changes in the firebase 9 so i will go through them and how we are populating the redux state once user logs in that we will talk about and then we will build the api so i am trying to cover as much as possible so restaurant service uh, what we are doing here is i will just cover some code diff first of all the entities here i populated some entities some properties in the dish entity that's a food type meal type cuisine type right and these are all enums in the dto these are all enums like okay what is a meal type breakfast lunch dinner cuisine type and the food type vegan veg non veg maybe egg is not a food type but these are the these are the dto's which we have updated for the dish and uh, let's say create restaurant dish dish menu is let's say paneer tikka so it's a name so it's like paneer tikka cuisine type is indian meal type is let's say it should be lunch right and then description should i get some description for panitika yes so i will just fetch some of the panitika content okay that should be enough right and then we also need to grab some images for this so let's go to our code this is simple description okay this is what panitika is right and then category and then food type vegan oh no no it's not vegan it's a simple vegetarian food you can say and then ingredients we can skip ingredients price price default is okay it's very expensive 200 per plate and delivery time is 60 minute thumbnails so let's get some uh, panitika image which we can use to just showcase studio some google images i just need a url because currently we don't have a platform for uploading the panitika images i think this is uh, this will work webp file or we can also look for png or jpg i could have done this offline this is necessary okay all our webp files fine so this is our banner i mean just a simple image what we, what we want to add 
this is thumbnails array and same thumbnails array we are going to have in the restaurant also like sometimes like burger king pizza hut domino's they have their default banner right so create restaurant body dto here we can have this banner this should be of type array array min size if you are passing this attribute then min size at least pass uh, one thumbnail icon so now let's also populate this property in our uh, database so we need to update our entity restaurant entity we already have this thumbnail property in the restaurant this we can copy it's a json b so we are in the restaurant entity and i can just simply put this type json b thumbnail so we are good we can create the restaurant so i will just refresh my page this is where our api exists right now i can just do simple login login with google because google provider i have registered and i will get the token okay uh, this is in the debugger let's uh, move it out and then inside network tab or i'm already storing this uh, access token in the local storage so i can copy it from there this is the firebase authorizer okay and here i can create a restaurant now i just have a thumbnail delivery options address so lots of information we are pouring in okay so restaurant is created and then okay there is an id of the restaurant so with the id you can also populate some menu items so here you are creating a restaurant dish right so this is a uid so funny tikka indian lunch thumbnails okay we are populating couple of properties and this is the dish menu item has been created for this uh, restaurant i mean currently I, actually there should be a role based but currently we don't have a role anybody can upload this stuff so this is the restaurant and that there, there are the dish menu items price delivery items ratings and all okay now coming to the api side first let's uh, add any other apis we need so we need the dish update and delete that uh, i remember and this is what we can do restaurant dish so let's go to our controller this is our code so what we need to do here is uh, let's go to our controller inside this restaurant controller okay so i think for restaurant we already have apis search restaurant is something which we were talking about so here we are passing search query dto we are passing latitude longitude uh, search text and then we have page and the limit and here we are using transform because these are query parameters which will come as a string and you need to transform those to convert them into a number and then you can apply a validation that it should be a number it should be optional and all and coming to the controller this is our search so what we need to do in search search is like okay you are getting all these properties restaurant search dto search query dto lat long search text page limit and if you see our ui here i want to fetch all the restaurant and then just uh, filter some properties right or maybe here we are just showing the dish menu items and then i will just have another grid where i can show top restaurants that's it just on the landing page so this looks like uh, we need to apply on the dish menu items right we have already have a restaurant and then they have a dish menu items we can just apply filters on top of dish uh, property to dish menu items only so here we have a ratings delivery time filters these are like order by right delivery time ascending descending cost low to high this is the number parameter right ratings low to high and at least these we should uh, take care so how we can take care currently it's just passing search text that is searching the restaurant right 
but there can be a dish controller so coming to the dish entity or dish controller so we need to build couple of more apis and the api is which belongs to okay i need an api api v1 restaurant dishes a simple search api right or restaurant search already have so restaurant dish search that will give us a, a search on top of all the dish menu items of a restaurant so let's see how we can put the naming of the apis okay so we can simply say api v1 restaurant and dishes and then do the search on that or let's say api v1 dish that's also the feasible option right api v1 dish and then just add uh, because that's uh, the right way of doing the resource naming because here we are trying to get the all the dishes irrespective of the restaurant ids and all so so we can just create a dish controller here because that's already there restaurant dish we can create a simple restaurant dish controller so we will just create a dish controller there is no harm in creating another controller and putting the resource naming correct so dish controller this will be a dish dishes and this is dish menu right and this is dish controller and then here we are going to just do search operations right i wanted to get a particular dish menu item or just a search it's going to have only one api dish menu items and this is like a search restaurant dish or list restaurant dish it's going to have i mean you don't need to be logged in user and if you don't need a parameter you don't need a body so it's like a simple search we can pass a search dto for this we already have created a search dto here can i use this one so i will try to copy this and we'll change it so restaurant dto okay restaurant dish dto so this DTO is talks about search dish query DTO. So here we don't need to pass let and long. Here we just need to pass the, the name of the dish. Maybe just a simple search text. Which we are going to match with the dish description, name and all. And then page limit, pagination if you want to add. And then other properties we wanted to have is order by. So this is order order by string and then uh, i mean this can be enum because we can do order by ratings and pricing ascending and descending so there are two types right so how we can do it so order by it should pass only a couple of attributes only like let's say the ratings you can pass order by price and all those things price ratings and what else we have price ratings delivery time so by default when you just say order by it will be always be ascending order like okay minimum will come first low to high high to low so there are two things we can do because this is all uh, ascending and descending order by so filter let's say filter and order by so order by can be ascending and descending asc or desc descending right this is like a simple sql query we see right select star from this 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 where, where order by price order by ratings order by delivery time ascending and descending so this can be our filter criteria and this filter criteria can be enum that's better if we create this as an enum so we don't need to struggle with uh, people passing any random values okay so this can be a filter filter type that should be good filter type 
and we will just create this attribute filter type enum this is a enum export class filter type and what all filters we see is there are three filters which uh, we find out okay search query dto that's a filter type price ratings delivery time go to the top and create this enum so here the enum says okay i want to do filter based on the price and we can apply only one filter at a time price ratings export enum filter type and then there is a last is a delivery time Okay, filter type this is the enum property let's add this enum for our DTO filter type this is filter type filter type this is the enum type an example is I'm just going to put price and then order by this can also be enum order by I mean this is to restrict the API is passing any random values And with the, all these tags, these properties will be exposed in the swagger. So the end user will know how to filter. That's the beauty of these DTOs. So filter type order by, I will just copy this and then we'll change the properties. This is order by, order by, order by is the enum. enum order by order by dot so how we want to order ascending order okay now i can just look for this dto this is search query dto i will pass this search this query dto inside this controller so it will be just uh, at the read query search this query DTO and we'll just import this and just pass this query param we will change this to search list query dish and this is going to use the same service we don't need to create a separate service for this services and this will accept a DTO And inside this search controller, okay, sorry. Here we are passing this search DTO. Service list restaurant dish. Okay, what happened? Uh, restaurant dish service. Okay, we added this in the wrong place. That's the problem. This should be added in the restaurant dish service. And here we are passing this query DTO. Just pass this parameter. Restaurant dish query DTO. Okay, so at least uh, integration is everything is connected. Now I can at least uh, can run this application. And can see our swagger docs okay i didn't add that in the controller that's another thing which i forgot so this is our dish controller add this dish controller okay so let's add the dish controller to the domain module i think it's already there and now we reload the page And we will see the API docs now. You can see this is the API docs. I think it has a lot more attributes. We need search term, filter type, and order by. So what we can do is let's go to our DTO. 
search query so here is a search text uh, filter we don't need i'll just remove it so i mean nothing is required as of now <coughs> this is also false this is also false page and limit uh, you should pass like at least a page one and the limit so those we can keep required otherwise if you are not passing then we will keep our default page limits okay so this is our search criteria now we can build the search logic right uh, nothing is required so here you can so here we are searching against all the dish menu items added by all the restaurant on the platform so here we are not doing elastic search or anything it's just a simple filter type order by so it should be ideally okay i mean don't get confused with these variable names order by ascending descending order by should be based on property and the order by behavior is ascending or descending right if you see the type arm how we do it order by property and then ascending and descending so we build a query builder and on top of that you can just add order by and you can do order by on multiple columns like if you for now we can just apply order by on a one a particular expression at a time otherwise you can do order by user dot name ascending user dot id descending user dot uh, email ascending something like this okay so this is our dto we will just access this dto here okay restaurant dish service so here we will get all the parameters from the query so what all we have is search text and then we have page limit and filter expression filter type and order by and uh, we need to build a simple type orm uh, query builder so i will be just stealing some expressions from here restaurant dish service because this search we are going to perform on the dish table right so this dot connection private read only i can inject the connection so we can inject the connection here and then connection dot get repository here it would be restaurant dish repository and what is the table name here restaurant dishes so it will be create query builder right so this is our query okay because we can do await at the last what happened duplicate identifier query okay this is you can say params okay so this is a query and on, on top of that can we do something on the query query dot add add where yeah we can do the closes now add where order by and all based on the conditions okay so what all conditions we have if search text is being passed that means you want to search based on some criteria so query dot so add where let's see add where so we can actually add a dynamic expressions here and what i want to add is i already wrote some code add where i can just use these brackets so add where new bracket i can import this is like you can just put so if search test is being passed that means it's a end close select star from dishes where uh, where this equal to this and search text we are comparing against multiple attributes so we can do this is the end close and inside this these all are or closes and where where or where or where so these are all or conditions and search text is on the main query is end so we, we, we will also see what the query we are creating dishes dot name like this dishes dot rest description right uh, i think we have a description attribute there name description yes name uh, description so here we are going to compare all of these with the search text name dot uh, dishes dot name description and what else we can add 
vision type ingredients is also a, like a description column we can add this that should be enough so this is dishes and t -t -t okay this is looking for the table i think we need to put full restaurant dishes dot name restaurant dishes dot description restaurant dishes dot ingredients here you can put the alias q equal to this and this is search text okay so if search test is text is being passed we added a query adware now once it is done what we can do is return await query dot skip uh, skip means we are going to pass limit and offset right so we can do skip limit okay we are passing limit and offset so how can we get the offset like how many items we need to skip that we can get by multiplying limit with page minus one so let's say you are passing passing the page first that means we need to i mean this is how we generate offset offset means how many items we wanted to skip let's say you are passing page two and limit 20 that means we need to skip the first 20 elements so we will we will just create generate offset 20 so we will just decrease page with minus one and multiply that with the limit that will become our offset so this is offset and this is how we are going to get the data restaurant this entity now why it is complaining can't be named without a reference sometimes i get confused oh, okay there is some missing import or what query dot add where and then this this is where we are executing the query query builder this is where we are returning it named without list restaurant dishes okay should i return a promise this query dot skip okay i think uh, there should be a get many oh i forgot it because it's still a promise which we need to iterate so get many will give us the pro promise of entity and what is the the result we are created generating promise of restaurant dish entity you can also add a return type <coughs> now can we just play with this let's see how it goes restaurant dishes <coughs> internal server error uh, so let's see what is the error here unauthorized that is fair because we are not passing any token i will copy the token for this uh, random internal server exception we can also add a, a exception filter so we will get appropriate exception from the apis okay application this token i will copy we will add exception filter for that now i can search i mean this should not be a protected api first of all why because this is going to be uh, exposed on the landing page and here there is nothing to do with the user logged in user so we will just comment this auth card right so we can access this api without even logging in right now i will just use this let's say i'm passing something else masala it's giving me the correct results right if i'm just passing panitika that's the the name it is matching with the expression and it is giving me this dish menu items right so if we we can also debug the query what query we are generating if you see select restaurant dishes this is our query now these are the aliases just uh, look at the where clause from this where restaurant dot dishes dot name like this or restaurant dish dot description like this or so it's like or query right so this is how we are building the query builder i mean we are not writing the sql query that's the first thing because what we are doing is we are using this type rm utilities to create the query for us <clears throat> now this is like search text is being passed now this is the first expression like uh, now if filter type is being passed 
if filter type is being passed that means we need to add an order by so query uh we should put a let on the query okay no that's fine so if filter type is there then we will just do query dot uh, order by okay order by and my expression is <coughs> now filter type there are three attributes right on the filter type you can filter based on three different attributes so we can use this filter type enum if filter type equal to filter type dot price so uh, what we will do is restaurant dishes dot order by restaurant dishes dot price and we can also see if you are not sure because nobody knows the syntax we always need to refer this is the table name attribute name and the behavior ascending or the descending so here uh, okay we can also check uh, the other attribute so this is the order by and here i mean this is the alternary expression so order by this is the required attribute if you are passing if order by is there and order by is equal to order by dot ascending then it will become ASC otherwise DESC it's DESC so it depends on like okay if you are not passing order by then I will be showing on the ascending order otherwise whatever the order you are specifying okay because the value is in the lower case we can just convert it to upper case or we need to add a transformer that we can avoid so if order by is there and order by you are passing ascending then it's ascending otherwise okay if order by is there then we will just pass that order by behavior otherwise by default we will just say ascending so now it looks correct if filter type is price then you can just add the same else if else if else if because only one filter you can add else if else if so filter type is now price what are the other options let's see delivery time i need to also check what is the attribute what is the entity attribute we have here delivery time price and rating it's rating without s and both are all are number so that's good <clears throat> so it's delivery time order by is again the same then here is order by ratings it is with s let's change it uh, because the entity attribute is not with s let's keep it consistent it's rating so this is my rating an order by can be decided based on the attribute okay so this is this just the additional behavior we are adding so this is how you can create a simple query builder using type ORM. you don't need to write a sql query that depends how you want it to be but this is how you can also add an order by or expressions and let's see if uh, it's working there is one error okay i can understand here we need to change now let's test this thing so we are passing price order by must have one of the following okay i need to reload this because it's passing the lowercase characters and then panitika sending 110 okay we are getting to test this i mean it is working or not then you can just add a uh, multiple dish menu items copy the firebase token create some more dish menu items and play with this data so we already have a restaurant id here just copy the rest this is the dish menu item id okay and i will just do the give me all the the restaurants what happened is the cpi not there okay i will copy the restaurant id 
and then i will add couple of more dish menu items and i will just change this behavior okay ratings okay delivery time is 30 minute price is this price is 2000 and this is kebab vegan kebab you can say indian category category that's it it's indian veg kebab you can say and we are creating this menu items which has a price and then add another one which has like let's say 500 delivery time is 15 minutes from the nearby restaurant <coughs> okay so now we have three dish menu items we can play with the, the dishes so price is in ascending order let's remove the search text <coughs> search text should be optional because sometimes I just don't want to pass it so how we can make it is optional and in the code we are already uh, applying the search only if search test text is being passed so here I wanted to fetch all the data fetch all the dish menu items and you can see price 200 500 and uh, 2000 so this is how it is working let's say descending order okay uh, i didn't see it working so this is the price order by descending desc let's see the query filter type and order by <coughs> okay this is the problem right uh what i what we are comparing this is the bug right sometimes this should be simply order by i am just only passing only ascending order that's obviously wrong i mean i'm just saying is if order by property is does exist then pass The simple order by what a stupid bug what i'm saying is if order by property is there then just pass the order by otherwise by default use the ascending order it's a property here order by string is not assignable to ascending and descending order by is a string so here we can do simple override i mean if order by is there then just pass this order by as a enum so what it is saying order by is a string that we already know so we need to pass this as a enum because the second argument of this order by is a enum right so this should be uh, we need to just convert this like we need to showcase a string type as a enum so this is how we can explicitly cast into a enum and this is fine now so whatever the order by you are passing that we will adopt otherwise ascending order so now let's try again descending and it should work now you can see 2500 and 200 so it works and we are good so this is simple uh, you can say listing api which i can consume on the landing page to show uh, the list of uh, you can see the top popular dishes based on the ratings delivery time and the cost high to low low to high right so we have our api is ready now next api we are going to build is fetching the list of restaurant with the dish menu items so here we can use the same set of query builder we also have a restaurant search api which is paginated and uh, or because we don't have a elastic search so what i'm trying to build is simple restaurant api restaurant search where you can just enter the restaurant name and it will just come with the restaurant information and the dish menu items we uh, earlier we are uh, earlier we have written the details and all but not the implementation so it is a latitude longitude rest search text is the the name of maybe the restaurant let's say dominoes 
Domino's Pizza Hat and Page Count and the limit. Right now what I'm doing here is inside our restaurant controller, we are calling search method. And what the search contains, same kind of logic, it's not much. Here we are just doing left join and select. What is the use of this left join and select because I want to extract the dish menu items also with the restaurant. That's why we are doing left join and select. So if you want to just explore how it really works, you can just look at the look at this documentation how we are doing left join and select and then just doing a add where clause and just passing the limit and offset. Same thing we are doing here. Here we are not doing anything conditional but we can do it because this is a simple query until unless you don't do skip get many and resolve this promise you can keep playing with this query query dot add where query dot order by query dot and where all these things you can keep adding to build the query so here uh, search dto we will we are getting search text limit and page this is the the random search we are going to add so on the restaurant api we have search on the restaurant page we have search right search for the restaurant and the food here it is trying to find the restaurant with the name or you can also uh, search based on the dish menu item name these are some of the selected criteria right so how can we do this in the restaurant api we are allowing you to pass if you check the swagger docs this is the restaurant search right here latitude longitude we are not using right now I mean we can just compare with the geopolitical geographical range with based on the latin long here search text we are considering that is important that can search uh, the restaurant name description or restaurant dish name description in all these four uh, attributes this is going to search the search text so let's build this query so search text is required let's keep it required or maybe because on the landing page we want to list down all the restaurant without even passing the restaurant text search text so go to restaurant controller this is our dto what if i'm not passing search text so we can make it is, is optional search text uh, restaurant name or dish menu name these things you can pass let's say okay search text is optional now so let's modify our conditions so here uh, we are building a simple query so this is the query param we are getting and this is our query this dot connection dot query builder and uh, left join we can add and here we need to check okay if search text is being passed then only apply all these add where close right if search text is there and limit and offset so what happens is let's say you are not passing limit and offset that also we can keep uh, optional so if offset is there otherwise we will just pass zero if limit is there otherwise we will pass 10 and here is our query and what we will do is await finally just apply the limit and offset okay so what we are doing if search text is being passed first of all this is left join and select restaurant with the restaurant we also want to fetch the dish menu items so we are exposing the dishes relations so dish dot name or or where so let's add one more dish dot add where or where so here dishes dot description so any alias and here we are passing search text if it is being passed so it's like a simple paginated api using type orm so restaurant dot name restaurant dot description dish dot name dish dot description and that's when you are passing the search text otherwise i will just fetch you the restaurant with all the dish menu items 
and with pagination right await query this is our query we have okay let's play with this now so this is, this should also be a public api if it is protected we will remove this restaurant controller okay this is a public api which is just returning the list of restaurants from the, the service and we can create some restaurant for that we need to be logged in we are already logged in i will create some more restaurants so let's say pizza hut dominoes okay so we have a couple of restaurants now i'm doing search let long so let's say okay so it is giving me because okay all the dishes are empty so it is giving me the pizza hut let's say dominoes it is giving me the right set of search results right that's what i want now if you want to play with this uh, because we can add a search menu item let's say this is a dominoes i created it so i can add a dish menu items so this is like okay farmhouse pizza right so this menu item we have added and i can search with the farmhouse now in the restaurant inside of instead of this i can just pass the menu item that's it right we are getting a farmhouse pizza for from the dominoes and this is how it really works you can also set this order by and all that's not really needed because at the restaurant we can just uh, list down based on the ratings if you want because we want to show only top rated restaurant because user will be rating the restaurant so we can just do a order by ratings that some living on to you you can extend this example passing the rating rating is already of type number order by and order by behavior ascending and descending we want to show the top 10 rated restaurants on the landing page so the api is ready for that so here is our home page and here we are showing top rated restaurants without filters filters we can apply only to only to restaurant dish menu items okay now let's uh, so this these are the our apis let's see if uh, something is pending now let's see overall restaurant service so we can close this and build something else i mean there are more apis we need to build from different services let's close the restaurant service so here we need to do put update delete for the dish restaurant dish so that whoever is has created this dish menu items can update can delete okay rest all i think it works we are exposing uh, the restaurant with all the dish menu items when user clicks on the landing page of the restaurant search is there we are also applying the search on the dish menu items and giving a paginated response so before going to the ui this is my dish controller and here i am just creating a dish any item i can do update and delete we need a firebase auth guard for all these so this is post creating right now i can just do put and i can do delete for delete i just need a user and the param without body okay so this is a put and this is a delete so let's import these so you can just say update restaurant dish this is delete restaurant dish so for delete i just need uh, the restaurant menu dish id so here dish id for put also we need to pass dish id so these are the rest apis post uh, put and delete we already have an api which gives us all the dish menu items of a restaurant so we don't need to add any new api here what happens why it's not importing so i can just add uh, put manually and delete okay so these are the different apis we have we need to create a dto for this which can have a restaurant id and the dish id 
रेस्टोरेंट आईडी एंड द डिश आईडी ओके सो हियर वी आर राइटिंग पुट अप द डिलीट सो दिस इज फॉर क्रिएटिंग अ डिश मेन्यू आइटम दिस इज फॉर अपडेट सो हियर वी नीड टू टेक आईडी एंड डिश आईडी टू डी टी ओ पारम सो वी नीड टू अपडेट दिस गेट रेस्टोरेंट बाई आई डी we will update this dto i think we already have some dto already defined so this is restaurant dto and uh, we will just extend this dto here so export class uh, okay export class get restaurant dish by dto so we can extend the existing dto we have is get restaurant by id dto this we can import from other file so now this is a get restaurant by uh, get restaurant dish by id dto so it's like it will have a two ids restaurant id and dish id so this dto we need to pass on our restaurant dish controller so that contains the id and the dish id both are of type uu id and inside payload uh, it's like a partial payload partial type i think do we have update restaurant dish by id otherwise we will create this type okay we have it so we will just pass these two types in our update api call so here instead of create restaurant this it will be update restaurant this and this will be delete restaurant this so in delete restaurant this we are passing the same uh, dto which is id and the dish id restaurant id and the dish id and the current logged in user so we can check the authorization so let's go to update restaurant dish that we need to define inside a service so restaurant dish service here we do have create restaurant dish so async update restaurant dish or i will just copy and paste this one we'll change this create to update that's a little fast and here these are the three different parameters we are passing who is the current logged in user what is the params so this is the user this is the query param and this is the body import all the missing things add all missing imports and here we are doing validating the authorization that if you are updating this dish id right validate authorization if you are updating this restaurant means you are updating a dish menu item then we can apply same authorization that are you the owner of this restaurant or not then only you can update delete or create the restaurant dish if everything is good then what we are doing is uh, we are just saving it restaurant dish repo dot save and this is your payload and here in with the restaurant we can also find a restaurant this because that we are trying to save here not a restaurant so first we got the restaurant then we can copy the same stuff here okay so here restaurant dish await this dot restaurant dish repo dot find find one and it's like a simple where clause where id we are already getting and id is dish id which we are getting from the params so we can just capture the dish id from the params so here we are getting dish id and the same dish id we are passing for getting the restaurant dish okay so this is the dish and here we can simply say is await this dot restaurant dish repo dot save so first of all we need to pass the existing dish and then we need to pass the payload and the restaurant restaurant is already there 
that's why you are able to update so simple update operation can be executed like this similarly delete right in delete what we are doing is delete restaurant this we don't have payload we just have user and ids so yes we are validating that dish menu item is there here you can simply do one check if let's say this menu item is not there then that means we are passing wrong id throw new not found exception if dish is null right this menu item is null same we can add a check here because this is what we are trying to delete and otherwise then restaurant dish report wrapper dot uh, delete and we need to pass the id of the record which we are deleting so id here is dish dot id okay simple this is how we are deleting okay so this uh, it's a validate authorization is authorizing the uh, is doing authorization that you are the actually creator and if you see the code that is existing code it is getting the restaurant and then checking the owner id with uh, the id you are passing in the param which you are passing in the user object user metadata if both are same that means you can access this restaurant you can update menu item create new menu item uh, delete uh, dish menu items all those things you can do because you are the creator or you are the owner of that restaurant so these are the new new set of apis and uh, this is delete so it will give us no content this is update so it will give us ok status code and this is create so it will give us the 200 ones created status code and i can just check the api docs and i can see this restaurant dish menu item dish id this is uh, both are of type uuid and we can update we can delete api even restaurants id dish dish id so if you see the the resource naming give me the restaurant of this id and uh, apply the delete on the dish menu items of this restaurant where the id is this here uh, ideally it should be dishes not just a simple dish it should be plural right so we'll just change it this is restaurant dish because we are selecting one out of those dishes okay so this looks correct now okay so this is all uh, about the restaurant apis and now what we can do is we can look for what is the next service or here in our apis if we look at our uh, front end components here we also need to maintain the address of the user right for managing the address of the user i'm just thinking where can we maintain uh, those kind of data like the user preference data user address data user can have multiple addresses while delivering uh, while getting the uh, order item let's say i can have multiple addresses and i need to save it somewhere so that once uh, I'm, I'm ordering and choosing a delivery address i can just choose the existing address which is already there even the coordinate city state uh, street name nearest landmark all these uh, properties and how we can manage the data that is user specific data if we think about this okay how where should we mint in that data then we can create a simple user service not an authentication service but a user preference service where we can store a user preference like okay i like this restaurant i like all these dish menu items these are my address some some data which is specific to the user currently there is a restaurant service and we don't have any authentication service or user service so we can just create a simple user service without user management that's not going to do any kind of a user management that simple service is going to store the addresses for uh, the users it can be user preference service so i can just copy this so it can be user you can call it as a user service that's uh, fine and go to your package json change the scope 
user api for user service to store user metadata not the pure user management because we are not doing it firebase is doing a user management post login we are just storing some particular attribute so here we need to have one table so in the domain we just have an address so that we will try to build i mean that's not a hard this is just a simple crud operation we are going to build so i will just put the address domain address controller address service address entity that's just going to store okay what is your city state let long nearest landmark and uh, whatever the address attributes uh, we can add like the preference preferred address default address and all and then uh, any type of user preference also we can store in a separate table inside this user service now let's uh, move to some part of a front end and let's try to see how we are doing uh, this authentication with a google right uh, so we are doing a so we are using firebase and i will also show some code of uh, front end here we are using firebase and here this is the redux this is old code since uh, beginning we built this but it is using redux now i want to just transform this to the redux toolkit and i'm going to create a slices all different slices for managing the user session fetching the list of restaurant fetching the top rated dish menu items all those will be done through the slices and on the home page we are just going to dispatch those actions asynchronous actions and synchronous actions okay asynchronous actions is when you are making a api call then we will be using this uh, create a sync thunk from the redux toolkit to fetch the data here how we are getting the google provider authentication if we just see i think uh, we are doing this sign in with the login with the google what that means is we are already using firebase and recently there, there is a change a major change uh, because we are using firebase 9 so you can see web version 8 and 9 we are using web version 9 and while setting it up i was not checking the documentation and i faced some small issues but the code has changed this is how you were doing it and now this is how you will do it you will import the firebase auth if you are using version 9 then let's say if you are creating a user there are different operations we are performing right password authentication where you are creating a user so create user with email and password because we are doing a sign up here we need to pass the auth which you will get using calling get auth so if you are using uh, firebase in any of your latest project always check the documentation if you are using firebase 9 so here we are using authentication first using get auth which is coming for from firebase auth and the same auth we are passing in create user with email and password sign in with email and password and there are a couple of more like sign out you want to do log out uh, using firebase apis then sign out is a method but get auth we need to get the authentication and pass the get uh, authentication there then it is doing a sign out and let's say google provider how we are getting first of all google provider using firebase session you can see simple provider google provider that's it and then how we are using this google provider in your code i will try to show you this code simple first we have to get the authentication using get auth and then pass this auth to the sign in with pop-up because when you click on this button it is going to show us pop-up and you are going to choose one of your google accounts to do the sign in that is already happening right so if you just click on to this it is going to show us a simple either pop-up or a new tab and we will just choose one of the google account and then once it is done it will redirect right code studio so this is how the login is working and you can see we are getting we are calling get auth getting the current auth and then uh, exporting this provider and what that button that particular button is doing if you see uh let's go to our auth component so sign in with google handle google sign up and you can see okay i want to just zoom this code handle google sign up what it is doing is sign in with pop-up that is coming from library here we need to pass the firebase auth i mean the get auth the return return of a get auth and the provider provider also it's the same provider 
which we are returning from here this is the provider new google auth provider same is there in the documentation nothing different and this is how you will get the access token you can see token is equal to credential dot access token and you can just store this access token somewhere but we are not doing it this way we are just allowing you to the login whenever you do the login whenever you do the logout we are already adding a hook on auth state change is it uh, documented here on auth state change i mean we have already written it i'm just showing it uh, so that yes this one set up authentication state observer to get the user data so what is this observer this observer is actually observing okay once when this your login is happening and this observer is looking for on auth state changed method so whenever the authentication happens so on auth state change you are going to pass the auth it will give you the user object that contains the whole payload stored by the firebase the user id email display name and all the properties right so on auth state changed if uh, you get the data that means you just signed in otherwise if you didn't get the user object that means user has been set null and you have been logged out this is how you can just keep listening the auth state changed and then you can do your logic that whenever you do the login we need to populate our redux state with the user token display name email means the firebase user data we need to populate the same thing we are doing on auth state in our uh, component i think that's a uh, root component if i remember yes we are doing on let me just check index.tsx okay we have written a separate provider separate provider user context provider right in this provider we are doing this subscription we are just uh, tracking for this firebase auth dot on state change on auth state changed we are passing the user auth and here we are access getting the user id token so firebase auth we are getting from the same auth dot on auth, auth state changed on auth state changed so we need to pass the auth and then user object okay this is how we were doing it in the eight so we need to change this code i guess i think yeah, i maybe it's working we i didn't debug this so here user auth and we just get the id token and then we can dispatch our redux stay redux action or we can just call the actions exported by redux toolkit slice right so here we have created a top level provider this top level provider will feed the user data to whole application and we are using this provider at the top of our application it's like provider right and now whatever the data is inside this provider will be exposed to all the application because this is added at the root level okay so let's try to see and uh, let's try to debug this this firebase thing like how the sign in is happening how this how the sign out is happening and how we are dispatching all these actions so i added a debugger on this to check if it is giving us the data and user auth you can see the whole payload is coming so this is how because re reload is also like changing the auth state because on the fly it will check that okay firebase session exists do the login you don't need to do the login and it will just generate this user okay we'll just proceed further and it will give us give you will get the id token and here it is we are just dispatching a redux action so if you just look at the redux toolkit this is our our redux state and inside the redux state you can see current user token email name display name and other state so now this uh, redux state tree also i'm going to change by using redux toolkit we will remove all the unnecessary stuff from it so auth will take care of the auth state uh, and on the landing page there will be landing state inside that we will just fetch the data for the landing page like the top 10 restaurant top 10 dish menu items and all then selected restaurant because you will click on to the restaurant we need to fetch the data then that that will become a selected restaurant and all the dish menu items because user can select only one restaurant from the landing page at a time so we will populate that data in the redux state tree 
okay so this is all uh, about uh, our front end and how we have done the, the basic setup of our components and this is how our restaurant service is done now uh, what i will do is we will do a mix of things some front end some back end so in the next video let's uh, build our small user service which is just going to manage the address that should not take much time and then we will build a card service and the order service and also work on the ui landing page for uh, so we will migrate this redux to the redux toolkit and we will start fetching the data from the apis to show uh, the data on the landing page from the live apis we have